Hello and welcome to Community Action, another show where we take a look at nonprofits and businesses throughout Columbus County and how they're helping the residents of Columbus County each and every day. Today we're doing a little bit different. Uh, as you can see, we're not in the studio once again, but we're also going to be talking with some folks from the Columbus County school system and to see how they are impacting the lives of children in our county who have been identified as at risk or hunger on the weekends through a program that's called the Backpack Buddy Program. So our guest with us today are Dr. Heather Piggott, who is the Director of Student Support Services with the Columbus County School System, and Kristen Britt, who is a school social worker with the Columbus County School System. Ladies, welcome and glad to have you with us today. I think thank you. Dr. Piggott, let me ask you, uh, tell us about how many children in the Columbus County School System have been identified as at risk for hunger on the weekends, and, and do those children come from all over the county, or is it just in one section, or how does that work? Oh, well, actually, uh, identified for the, uh, the Backpack Buddy Program, we currently have approximately 700. I want to kind of preface that that is not limited to, and yes, do we have more, but specifically for at least this last academic year of 1920, uh, we have had roughly 700 students that fell within the criteria. Um, we have been very appreciative uh, of the services of this program in which I think our tabulations last from our social workers. We actually had and received over approximately a thousand um, backpack components to be sent out under the program. Um, the students are identified throughout our three regions in the county, which includes the southeast and uh, the western end of our district and um, they cover a variety of ages and populations, and it is not just limited to one particular group or section. Excellent. And I know that uh, uh, currently you're partnering with the Columbus Baptist Association to uh, provide these bags. And Kristen, as a social worker here in the Columbus County School System, how do you distribute these bags uh, to these students that have been identified as at risk? Okay, so each school identifies one person to kind of be the lead person that will distribute those bags. Um, so we will collect the boxes um, from the Columbus Baptist Association, the social workers do, and then we deliver them to the schools, to that contact person. Um, and then on Friday afternoons, um, those students will receive the bags individually from that contact person. Usually the um, contact person will discreetly call the child into their room um, with their backpack, flip it into their backpack, and then the student can go back to class. And it's not a, not a big deal in terms of, you know, how the student is identified. I know that uh, just in full disclosure, I work with the Columbus Baptist Association and we, we prepare the bags here. And I know that each bag contains uh, two breakfast items, four uh, lunch and dinner items, and four snack items, as well as uh, three of the juice boxes. Uh, and, and so those are distributed each Friday uh, to the students so that they can get the, uh, the, the food for the weekend. Um, uh, Kristen, let me ask, I'll also ask you, are, are the students, I know you said that it's not a big deal, but they're not singled out in any way. It's not something that's that's done in a, a, a big paraded manner. This is done discreetly so as not to put the students on the spot or embarrass them in any way. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, they are discreetly um, called out of class individually. Like there's not an announcement or anything. Um, and like at the high school level, the students who are identified kind of know to come. So they just kind of pop in to that identified person's room and will grab their bag um, in the elementary and middle school level. Usually they are either called, just called out of class, um, you know, just said, can Dave Hiller come to the office for a moment? Um, and then they will receive their bag there um, one at a time individually. So it's very discreet, nobody's singled out. Um, you know, no one knows really what they're going up there for. Well, that's great. Uh, Dr. Piggott, with the school system uh, going 
kind of different next year as far as how school's going to look. I know some of the students are going to be allowed to do distance learning. Some of them will be back in the classroom. How are you going to make sure that the, the, the children who've been identified as at risk are going to be able to get these bags even if they're not at the school? That's a really good question. And as you're aware, um, district-wide and across the state, we are currently working on various protocols uh, to assist us not only um, with efforts like this as far as reaching students at risk, um, but also with our, our learning. And with those protocols, one of the expectations district-wide for us here in Columbus County Schools is to make sure that we keep a strong pulse on the needs of our students. So with the Student Support Services team, and we're thankful that we have an amazing group of social workers, but we also have some special appendages that actually help the ladies in picking up, distributing, contacting, um, making those face-to-face -face supports uh, with our students and keeping a pulse on them. We'll be activating that. Our office hours and our, our, what our day looks like will be pretty much the same because we consider ourselves um, kind of the pulse of services um, for our district. Um, the services and things that we provide, including and not limited to this program, um, help to encourage and promote educational success. So with that, um, the social workers, they are aware, they're in and out of the schools respectively. They know the partners, those individuals or students who will be in the school by attendance, as well as those that will be working virtually through our remote learning programs. So we will be making contact, um, if not through well checks and things such as that, ongoing on a weekly basis, but um, also telephonically. And we will make sure that uh, following, of course, our three W's and maintaining that safe protocol, that we will still be getting those needed items to our students that are considered and classified as at risk. Um, so it'll be a massive undertaking. We're still learning as we go through this process, but I have no doubt with our support team and the support of our administration that we will get the job done. With things changing daily, you, you almost have to operate on a loose pulley, so to speak. But you adapt, you overcome, and you improvise, kind of like a yes. operation. So. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like a 51st date. Every day is a new day, and we just take whatever's dealt with us and we make the best of it. Kristen, with new students coming into the school system, what if they're identified at risk? How, how do they get enrolled in the program? Is it, uh, is it a simple process? I mean, you don't want kids to fall through the cracks. So what about folks that come in and, and uh, say, the middle of the year or uh, you know, not from the very beginning? Yes, we do have frequently have new students enrolling um, throughout the school year. Um, and when they come in, uh, usually within the first week, the teacher can identify some issues, whether or not they may be at risk. Um, oftentimes we can identify that upon enrollment because they may um, ask for some assistance with school uniforms or book bags and supplies. And that kind of gives us an indication of some need. Um, and so we just add them to the list. Um, you know, we don't really have like an enrollment program. We just have a list and we'll add them to the list um, to perceive, receive those services and those bags in addition to other services that we can offer them, you know, if we have uniforms or if we have the bag supplies, whatever. Well, I know that throughout the years, schools have uh, had to adapt to the way that the community is. And it's not just a matter of teaching, reading, writing, and arithmetic anymore, that there are a lot of services that are involved to help the students to, to have all of those needs met to as much as it as can be. And um, uh, I know that, uh, that your program through student services, Dr. Piggott, is, is one that um, is not just about making sure they've got books and things like that. that. Give us an idea about what is involved with all of student services and some of the different areas that you help to cover. Wow, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, like I said before, we take great pride as considering ourselves as a part of the hub, the, the pulse of support. So with that, we have some amazing um, school nurses that actually provide services, health care needs, wellness, um, 
and medical supports to all of our students. Uh, equally, we have, of course, our team of amazing social workers. Uh, we additionally have, uh, we're part of our counseling group, and we're very proud to have our K-8 counselors as a part of our team. Um, and they work very closely as a unit to support um, both the needs within the academic setting, but also things that may be crossover and tap into with mental health services. We additionally have uh, three, two partners through um, a collaborative uh, effort, which is called our School-Based Mental Health Initiative. And we have two agencies that currently provide in-house therapy services, individualized as well as group, and depending upon the extensive needs, additional services that the student and their families might need. Um, and additionally, we also have an amazing group of behavior support individuals actually tap in and work directly with the with the classrooms with special needs students um, and all students alike uh, so that we can keep kids in school and keep them engaged. Um, also, we have a dropout prevention component um, and specialists there are very proud to say in the state, uh, in our district, but even as a state, our numbers are far below the guidelines uh, across the board. We have maintained and been able to keep students engaged and get them graduated. And that is due in part to that collaborative hands-on support that our JCPC um, person and also dropout coordinator kind of wears a dual role with our JCPC program as well as a youth and family counselor. If there are some legal matters that sometimes we get into and we need some support, uh, he supports the family as well. So uh, those are some of the components as well as our in-school suspension components, which we have alternative learning programs. And that means that we try to keep our kids engaged. We don't want them out of school. We need them with us. And although with this pandemic and what that's going to look like for us in the future, we're not certain. We're learning as we go. We are still committed to engagement, support, and services at the total child is what we're about. Preparing them, I'm so thankful the, that we have such a team here in Columbus County and for all the work that you do. Um, this is coming into the end of the second year that you've partnered with the Backpack Buddy program. And Kristen, how have you seen the teachers react to this program? I mean, do they, do they see a difference in students uh, who benefit from the backpack bags? Are they able to to tell that it makes a difference? I believe they can tell. Um, it was a little bit of a learning curve at the beginning, just trying to identify students um, and for the teachers to understand the purpose of the, the program. Um, but now that we've kind of gotten that squared away, um, I think they do notice the difference and they're very much on board with the program. Um, when we have new students to enroll, they will make an effort to pay attention to the student and see if they have any needs. They're very quick to help us identify students um, who have those needs. Um, and they're very appreciative and very grateful for those services and that program. Dr. Piggott, as a representative of the school system, um, these, these backpacks are provided to the school system at no cost from the community, from businesses and, and civic groups and churches all coming together to try to help the, the children in Columbus County with the, uh, the, the, the hunger program that's there. Um, what does that partnership do for the school system? How do they respond? How does the school system feel? We feel we are very humbled, thankful, and grateful. Um, we know that. It is, education is about a collaborative, supportive endeavor and effort. It truly, truly takes a village to support our students, and especially in the conditions and situations and days and times that we live in currently. If it were not for those committed stakeholders and partnerships that have been established, um, it would make our jobs very difficult to encourage and support our generations to come. And although our area may be specific as we look at it, we are an educational system, we in no way, shape or form ever forget 
that it takes more pieces to build a foundation to establish a firm educational individual and make them well-rounded. And that takes the community and we're very thankful to have that relationship. The thing that is, it's not just the church is doing it, but we've got business groups and civic groups and, and, and folks from all over the county that are coming together and recognizing this need and stepping up and, and providing all that's needed to, to make this happen. We even have a partnership with United Way that provides funding to help us to do this. And it, it's been impressive to me to see how the community comes together to support these students at need. Um, and uh, in, in the process, I, I think it draws the community together closer because yeah. we're recognizing that we have, uh, we have needs. We need to help meet those needs and work together for not just the betterment of those children, but in honestly, all honesty, it, it helps the community in the long run because when our children are taken care of, uh, it provides a better uh, opportunity for them to grow, for them to learn, for them to thrive. And when that happens, the community is much better as a whole. Um, Absolutely. Kristen, the bags that are distributed, the people that pack them, they pack them and they put them in the boxes and that's the end of it. They don't ever have any contact with the students. They don't ever see any of this. They don't even know who the students are. That's something's totally confidential. Uh, and I was wondering if, if without giving any names, if you could share a couple of stories about maybe how some of these bags have impacted the, the lives of the kids. Absolutely. Um, I have one particular family that comes to mind. They, um, the mother and father with um, three children, and they were truly homeless. Um, they might spend the night at a friend's house. They might sleep on the pew of a church. They um, very often slept in their car. They didn't know from minute to minute or day to day where they would be sleeping, where they would be spending the night. Um, parents had health issues that kind of was preventing them from, you know, looking for work or getting work or anything to kind of pull themselves out of that difficulty. So these bags were literally especially on the weekends when the students weren't at school to get a breakfast and a lunch these bags were their their meals and their food um so it had a tremendous impact on them um and still does they they have um their situation has improved at this point but they are still in need of some help and so um you know, while, while it's very helpful and appreciative now during those really tough times, it literally was a lifeline for them. It's, uh, it's an amazing program and our students really are impacted by it. As a social worker in the school, how has this program impacted you? I mean, what have you seen? Uh, how, how has it affected you as you've known that the, 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 the needs of these kids are being met? Uh, to help them from not having to go hungry on the weekends. It, it's been a tremendous impact on me too. Um, I'm very grateful and appreciative of the community partners that have allowed us to be able to distribute those and to donate them um, to our students. Um, I, I love to see the impact that it has in our students and know that you know, as a social worker, a lot of times we're very concerned about our kids. So we don't turn it off at three o'clock when school is over and, you know, it doesn't turn off on the weekends. We're still very concerned about it. So it's just a little bit of peace of mind for me to know that, you know, little Johnny or little Susie's going to have something to eat this weekend. Like I don't have to worry about that for them. Um, you know, so it, it really does impact not just the students, but it impacts us as the social workers and the teachers and the staff at the schools. Dr. Pickett, as we get ready to close in just a minute or two, is there anything else that you want to share with us about what's coming up that, that maybe you need the community's help with as far as uh, the student services or anything else that you know that we need to know to help make this partnership even stronger? I first just want to again say and stress uh, very humbly that we are appreciative, very thankful, and grateful 
for the collaboration and the support. It is truly a team effect and it makes an impact and makes a difference in a child's life. Um, with that also, as we're preparing for what our school year will look like, um, we will still be committed. The needs will still be there, although the school day may look different. Um, and we appreciate, again, that support. Um, I know that with some of, if we go to a more of a remote learning option, um, just keep in mind that uh, there may be some need for Wi-Fi um, uh, connectivity. I know that um, our lead person uh, for our remote learning, Mr. Kelly Jones, who is our PR extraordinaire here for our district, um, he is always out there looking for additional resources. But with those things that have already been done, things that are yet to be determined and seen. We just thank you and we always have our doors open and we're very receptive to any ideas and support that can be given. Um, we appreciate it. It is truly a team collaborative effort and we thank each and every one of the partners that make this a possibility for our kids. Today I received an email from the Chamber of Commerce asking about uh, any businesses or organizations that would be willing to share their Wi-Fi with students mm -hmm. who didn't have internet connection at home, and there was a form to fill out, and it was a, something as simple as maybe just letting them even sit in your parking lot and access or be able to come inside if there's a room or a, a place available for them. You know, there's, there's so much that we can do to work together as a community to help to educate our children. We've, even though we may not be educators ourselves, there's a lot that we can do to make sure that we're providing as much as we can to help every child get the education that they need. I know that for the backpack program, if you're interested in donating to that, whether by financial support or you want to go to the grocery store and pick up some items, uh, in a moment there's going to be a picture come up on the screen and it'll show you uh, the items that we collect. They're all individual sized. Pop top, no can openers, no cooking, no, no anything needed that's already prepared. And you can drop those off at the Columbus Baptist Association anytime Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday from 8.30 to 4.30. And we'll be glad to receive those from you. Um, if you want to donate, you can contact us at 910-642-2155. Or you can send a check to 208 South Thompson Street. Just mark on it, Backpack Buddy Program. And we'll make sure that that 100% goes to helping support the children who are at risk for going hungry on the weekends. You know, the school does a wonderful job of being able to provide hot meals for the students during the, during the week. Uh, but once they go home on Friday, there's no guarantee that some of these kids will even be able to eat again until they get back to school on Monday. And one of the things that we keep driving over and over again is if you're hungry, it is awful hard to learn. And so, we want to make sure that we can do our part to help provide some food for these kids to go through the weekend with and be able to come back to school on Monday morning ready to go, whether it be in school physically or sitting at home and doing it virtually. That's yet to be determined, but there are still a lot of things that we can do to help make that student have every advantage that they need to have the greatest education we can provide. Dr. Piggott, Kristen, thank you so much for joining us today and being a part of this program. We appreciate it very much. And for you joining us, we thank you for watching and we look forward to having you join us next time on Community Action as we take a look at another business or nonprofit here in our community and find out how they're making the lives of, of Columbus County citizens improve each and every day. Thanks again and God bless you.